So, I mean, as you can see now, um, the problem here is um, well, what is the position in the end? And um, I would suggest we make a position. It has to be a char, otherwise we can't compare it to ship. Um, we, may, we just take from the game board the row and the column. And this will give us uh, what is on the, well, let's say master game board. Uh, if there is, for example, in one, one, if there is a ship, then we will print out water instead. But if there is water, we just print um, the position itself. Um, so now, why I am not just printing water all the time, I can also say, well, just print out water every time. Because I want also to display the hit and misses, um, so that the player doesn't type in one and one over and over again, uh, and doesn't see that anything happens. So that the, uh, that the game board that we will display is um, kind of responsive, and, well, gets, uh, and the player will get a better gameplay. The game player would also say that our player needs to know um, which row and which column he can address in the end. So uh, what I would suggest that um, we print out um, the row numbers um, in front of the row. So we right now have our four, five, or six rows and our four, five, six columns. But um, we just have this grid and the player doesn't know how he can address um, a coordinate. So we just um, use this for loop and just um, print out the value of um, row and again um, this empty uh, blank space. So now the problem is um, that, well, we could start with zero, but usually you would start with one and therefore we just um, add one to it. So we display one, two, three, four, five and not a zero, one, two, three. Well, um, we have to keep that in mind because when we get, then get the user input, we have to take that um, into account because when we display one, two, three, four, uh, we know that the player will type in 1, 2, 3, 4 and not 0, 1, 2, 3. So we just have um, to memorize that we used this here when we then um, handle the user input. Okay. And uh, well, we should also do that with the columns, of course. And for the columns, we um, cannot do it really in this um, for loop here. We just have to create a new for loop. Uh, and i0 and we will iterate it um, until it um, will reach the game board length and we will increment it by one. So, um, and what we basically do here, the same as here again, so I can just pick that and print out instead of row i. So this will be our um, well, column index grid. And actually I can try to run the code and it should print the game board. Well, okay. This looks not good, and I know why, because um, we forgot to um, here print out um, an empty line. Yeah, now it should work. Okay, we also have to uh, print out the line, of course, um, behind that for loop. Yeah, here, behind that for loop, and now it should work. Yes. So what you see here, this is pretty ugly. This is too far to, um, well, the left, I would say. So we have to just print um, some blank spaces here. I would say it's two blank spaces. So that uh, game board should now look, yeah, now it looks nice and clean. And we, have, we can easily address every position. Okay. The last thing we should do here is just print out an empty line behind this board, or after this board, better said. Um, just if we get a user input, so it won't be in this um, row, but down here, just to make it uh, well more clean. Okay, good. So the next thing we want to do after we have our print game board function, we will uh, now face um, the implementation of the game logic in the main function. So. We will say something like, well, um, why we haven't detected every ship or undetected ship number is um, above zero. Then um, what we want to do is, well, first we have to get the guess coordinates. And therefore we will write a function get the user coordinates to um, get the coordinate from the user. After we got um, the guess coordinates, um, we want to evaluate, evaluate, and well, 
we want to evaluate the guess and get well the target somehow we we want to um we want uh, to know what we want to print on our game board this is what i mean with get target um yeah this also a function and we get the target or we return the card target which will be a char and i will call it location view update yeah so this will be an update of our location view or better i mean you could also call it game or i think location view update is it, it makes sense to me so um and if this location view update is a hit then we will decrement the undetected ship number by one uh, yeah and then we also of course have to update our game board yeah and of course in the end we should print out the game board again here we know what we have to type in water and ship all right so now we have lots of stuff to do the first thing we should do is instantiate this undetected ship number which um well i would say it's just a ship number at the beginning because we're just decrementing it um okay why isn't this working here and the ah okay i made a typo yes now it should work great so um what we want to do here uh, to implement these three functions and um, then try it out how the game will implement is get user coordinates and um, well as I said before we have to take into account that oh, wait a moment I will do that again because uh, we first have to think about it what we need um, in, in this function and um, well basically I think we only need the game board length Yes, okay, now we can create it. We have the game board length now in here. Um, well, so why do we need the game board length? Uh, well, we have to check if the user putting coordinates that are actually on the board and, um, well, try to prompt the user again for input if he just put it 10, 10. Uh, if the board is only four long, then 10, 10 wouldn't make any sense. And just to avoid, um, well, a buggy game, um, we just check it here if it is within the limit. So um, I will first declare um, a row and a column variable. I will not initialize it because I want uh, to get that from the user. So um, in order to well let the user know when he can um, type in his um, guess for the row coordinate, for example, we should do something like uh, a text so that the user knows uh, okay now I have to um, well, type something in and we just call instantiate the row now and um, we do that in Java well we prompt the user in Java with this um, scanner uh, system dot in and um, it should be of type int okay and we do this while um, the row is smaller than zero so if the user types in minus five or minus six or um even even uh, zero or something we mm. yeah so so if the user is typing um in some number that um that doesn't make sense on the board we will just prompt um, the user again for input and um, this should also be the case if the row is larger than the length um, of the board the game board length exactly okay and uh, we want also to prompt our user for um, his row uh, his column guess okay column uh, new scanner system in makes sense all right and we do that also while the column column is smaller than zero or if the column is larger than length plus one okay and um 
now we have game board length. Now we have to take into account that, um, well, we print out our game board with one, two, three, four, and not zero, two, three, and therefore we have to return. Um, well, we return an int array, but what is important here is that we return um, row and column, but we subtract one. So if the user um, gives in um, a number, which is below one, by the way, uh, below one, or above the game board length plus one, so it's out of the range of our board, we prompt him again, but in the end, um, which the user can't see, we just um, subtract one, just uh, so we don't have uh, to mix it up with our indices when we, for example, evaluate the guess or update um, the game board. So this is our get user coordinates, which is now fully implemented.